Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the Chosen Cosmetology Coach channel. Today, we're going to be learning about how to neutralize or tone out unwanted tones and how to decolorize the hair and then go back in and tone to create the color that we want. And we're going to do that by using water with food coloring. Okay, I am going to replace my developer with baking soda and my bleach formula with actual liquid bleach. Now, of course, I have to tell you, do not do this on real hair. It will extremely damage your hair. But I wanted to do it with water to show you guys how exactly it works. So let's start out by creating our three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Okay. First things first, blue, there's a drop. Perfect. Then we got red. Boom. I really like red. Let's do a couple extra drops so you guys can really see that color. I know it's not, not much, but, and then a little bit of yellow. Kind of see what it creates. Let me grab this spoon here, thanks to Brahms. Here we have our blue. Our red. And I'm gonna use the same one in our yellow. Look at that. There we have it. There's our blue. Here, I'll move out of the way so y'all can see this. Now, I'm gonna take these, this blue, or I'm sorry, this red, this blue, and this yellow, and I'm going to set them over here. And what we're going to do now with this one is we are going to create, and I want to clean it out to make sure that there's nothing in it, no dust or anything like that, no oxidizer. We want to make sure we're starting from a clean slate. And we are going to make some brown hair color. So first, we want to add a little bit of yellow. Actually, we want to add a lot of yellow because it's our least dominant color. I want you guys to really be able to see that. Let me save a little bit just in case. I need to use it for neutralization. Then we're going to take a little bit of red, which then creates our kind of reddish orange. Then we're going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of blue. And I say a tiny bit because why is that? because blue is the most dominant and we are shooting for brown hair. Okay, give that a swoosh. And there you have it, y'all. We have some brown hair. See that? I'll put it up there next to you guys, next to the wall so you can see, but there's our brown hair. Now, we wanna take our brown hair and we want to make it uh, kind of a deep, chocolate okay in order to do that we want to take the most dominant color blue we want to add just a tad bit more and as you can see adding the blue has made it a little bit darker see there let me move this out of the way so you guys can really see I'm trying to kind of put this up next to the wall so you can see it so there we have your typical brown hair color but what if i wanted it to be like chocolate right so then I would add a little bit of red. And what this red's gonna do is in equal proportions, it will change it to a beautiful chocolate. If we put more red, it's gonna turn it into like a medium chocolate brown or red brown, I should say, not so much chocolate. And then if we were to add a little bit yellow, it would then even give it this almost like a beautiful like copper brown with copper undertones would be really pretty but we're going to add a little bit of red to our neutral colored hair just to see what it does still remaining brown so that means we have to do a little bit more to make it equal or at the same level if we were doing hair, right? 
now we're getting more kind of like a beautiful like red brown look at there right so remember when you add a red to neutral you're going to get more of a chocolate result okay now i'm going to add now i'm going to wait on that no you know what i'm going to add a little bit more yellow just to kind of give it a little bit of brightness kind of a more chocolatey feel look at there now we're getting kind of more of a orangey copper color pretty cool but what i want to do now is i want to change it back to a kind of average level like level five brown or neutral i should say not brown so i'm going to add a tiny bit more blue kind of a deep rich chocolate color look at that the more blue i add the more brown it becomes look at this you ready hope y'all can see the beautiful brown okay now we've got some brown hair color now we need to go in and we need to bleach it out because now that we have a pretty brown base we're going to bleach out some highlights maybe some balayage and once we do that as we are bleaching out the balayage or the highlights or whatever you want to do ombre you are going to see how the color actually removes from neutral hair okay so to do that first things first and because i can't mix this up differently i'm going to add a little bit of my developer and here's my developer okay and this is really baking soda and again do not put this stuff in your hair okay it's not going to do what this water does our hair is different composition okay so let's go in and let's put in a pretty good chunk of some oxidizer it's not changing the color of our hair hmm. i guess developer just can't work on its own like that but let's add a little bit more because uh i don't know we'll make it 20 30 something like that there we go now we are back to brown. We're gonna kind of let that settle down. Let our oxidizer kind of do its job or developer, catalyst, whatever you'd like to call it. Now we're gonna go for the bleach. We're gonna mix our bleach in with our developer. You ready? Here we go. Here's a little bit of bleach and we are going to watch it do its job and I'm going to give this a little stir now that we have our oxidizer in there and I want you guys to watch because the first thing this is going to do is it's going to start pulling out the most dominant color which is blue that's right so as you can see adding that bleach it is slowly decolorizing the hair and this is how it works on real hair as well we don't just add some bleach and it goes from brown or red or whatever straight to um you know blonde it actually has to go through a process and as you can see it's working so first it pulled out all of the blue pigment then it pulled out all of the red pigment it may even still be working a little bit on the red and now we're getting down into the yellow hair pretty cool huh now if we were working with a real developer, I wanted to let you guys know again, just as I let you know before, there are four different developers, 40, 30, 20, and 10. The 10 volume developer lifts for 10 minutes and deposits for 30. 20 lifts for 20 and deposits for 20. 30 lifts for 30 and deposits for 10. And 40 volume developer completely lifts. When I refer to lift, I mean the amount of a cuticle that is opened in order to release or dissipate or disperse those colors. And as you guys can see, it's still doing its job. Now, in hair color, this process that we're doing right now takes approximately 40 minutes. So that's how I came up with that figures, those figures. If it takes 40 minutes for a typical hair color to do its job and process, then that means every developer is going to adjust the time in which it lifts and deposits. So again, with 40 volume developer, 
it is going to lift for the whole 40 minutes. 30, it's going to lift for 30, deposit for 10. 20, lifts for 20, deposits for 20. And 10, lifts for 10 and deposits for 30. Hope that all makes sense to you guys, but it's a great way to remember what developer to use because we know bleach is always going to do the same thing and it needs the same time frame so adding a higher level of developer to bleach is not going to make it work any faster it still needs its 40 minutes and your best bet is to actually start out lower let it process slowly kind of like a good roast slow and low but for the sake of time as you can see our brown hair color is still decolorizing. I am going to, for the sake of time, hit it with a little bit more bleach just to kind of speed this process up. Although it is getting kind of yellow, like pale, pale yellow, right? Now, of course, in the real world, once we get hair as light as we can get it, we are still going to end up with pale yellow results. Do understand, it is a common misconception that the higher bleach, the higher developer you use, and the more bleach you use, and the longer you leave it on there, will make the hair white. Just for the record, that is not how it works. Once hydrogen peroxide and ammonia come together, and the chemical reaction is created, it actually leaves a residual color of yellow. So now if we're thinking about complementary colors and we really want that yellow out of there, we're not going to continue to bleach it because we're going to destroy the hair and blow out, the, blow out that cuticle. But rather, what we're going to do is we are going to go in and neutralize it with a neutralizing color. Now, let's see if, in fact, I can do that. And if you all remember the complementary color, right, the one that lies directly underneath yellow, so we can make a straight line, whether it's a diagonal, straight, horizontal, it doesn't matter. So if we want to remove yellow, we then apply what? Violet, perfect. So let's do a little bit of violet and see what we get. I don't have violet food coloring, but I do, however, have a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. Okay, let's see how coordinated I am, guys. You ready? We're gonna come together. One drop of each, maybe two of the red, we'll see. There we go, we got, oh, I'm not gonna do that. So now we have our violet, red and blue make yellow. I'm sorry, red and blue make purple, which we call violet. I'm gonna give that a good spin. Oh, look at all those different colors, it's changing. Oh, that's crazy. Oh wait, it's gonna start taking that out. Let's see what it does. Let's see what it does. This is awesome, guys. Our goal is to get the hair back to as pale as we can get it, which was a pale yellow. And then we add in some violet, which we did. And did you see how that just changed colors? Like, that was super cool. Let's try it one more time just so you guys can see. And then this was just a fun day of color class, learning how to tone and decolorize hair while I wait for my mannequin to come in the mail. So I did one more drop of blue and one more drop of red. I'm gonna keep, there's my purple. Oh wow, let's see how well it works. Remember the bleach and the developer's already in there. Let's give it a good little spin and see where it takes us. Look at that guys. It just keeps getting lighter and lighter. That's super cool. As it settles, you will notice that the color just keeps getting lighter and lighter. So now to do this, we don't want to add any more bleach if it's hair. What we wanna do is we wanna let it process its full 40 minutes. Now, if you go past the, four, the full 40 minutes and the hair has still not decolorized to a pale yellow or to the level of yellow that you are looking for, and depending on what level it is, Five, you're gonna have more of a red-orange. Six, or dread. Seven, kind of like a goldy copper. Eight, you're gonna have a strawberry blonde. 
maybe kind of a darker strawberry blonde, maybe like maybe more of an auburn. Um, nine is going to be definitely be your strawberry blonde and 10 should be your pale yellow. And it looks like, look at this guys, we got it back to yellow. Now, because I have both the decolorizer and the bleach in here, I can continue to add blue and red to create purple because it's complementary and on the opposite side of the color wheel as yellow. Therefore, we use it to neutralize out unwanted tones. Do keep in mind, this is not hair. This is water, bleach, and baking soda. And I will tell you again, do not apply this to the real hair. There are some tricks you can use with the whole, like, baking soda and different things like that to remove semi-permanent hair color, but this would be in the case of permanent hair color or uh, virgin hair or natural color hair. Do keep in mind, anytime you're bleaching hair and you want to bleach up to the like base and the roots, always remember that when you're bleaching, you want to start to apply that bleach about one eighth to one fourth of an inch away from the scalp. Why do we do that? Well, because our head is warm and anything hot is going to activate this and cause it to, it actually warmth activates bleach and then causes it to process faster. That doesn't mean that you put a foil in somebody's hair and you're like, ooh, this ain't lifting fast enough for me. I got things to do, I got a date tonight, I gotta go home, I gotta clean the house, gotta go brush up, whatever it is that you do after work. Don't pick up your flat iron and hit that foil. Just don't. Don't put them under the dryer. In fact, most bleaches in the salon will specifically tell you, do not use with heat, okay? Now, there is an exception to the rule and I'm going to tell you. If it is a regular hood dryer and you put somebody underneath that with foils on, you will fry their hair. You will blow out that cuticle. You want to avoid doing that. So if you want the hair to process faster, well then I guess you should have booked your appointment for sooner. That's all I can tell you. Because if you try to have any secrets to where you're like, ooh, I can do this, here's a good tip, I'll just add heat and it'll process faster. Or, oh, I could just put her under the dryer and everything will be okay. No, you're gonna over process that hair causing it to break and have extreme damage where the hair feels like mushy and gushy and it doesn't bounce back to its shape. Anyway, it's real nasty. You don't want to do that, okay? You just don't, especially as a hair hairdresser. You do not want to put bleach under the dryer. If the bottle or the container, the powder bucket of bleach says do not use with heat, listen to the manufacturer's instructions. They're gonna know best, why is that? Because they're the one who came up with that chemical compound and it's their technology. So if anybody understands it, they do because they made the product, they manufactured it. Now, as you can see, I can continue to add purple to this yellow and it's still not gonna pull out that yellow, okay? However, this is water, okay? Now in real hair, if you were to add purple or violet onto pale yellow hair, it is going to neutralize out the unwanted tones. That's where our complementary comes in, complementary color, color. So remember, if you want the yellow out, you have to add purple. If you want the red out, you have to add green. And if you want the orange out, then you have to add blue. Opposite ways can be the same thing. If I want out blue, I need to add orange or copper. If I want out green, then I have to add red. And if I want out purple, then I have to add yellow. That's where the complementary colors come into play, okay? Now, again, one more quick misconception. And of course, I could sit here all day and continue to add purple, but unfortunately, I don't know how long it would take. And I know I don't have that time and I know you probably don't either. And I absolutely respect that. So with that being said, one more tip that I'm gonna share with you today. A lot of you think that if you take and you put bleach into gray hair, like that white gray hair, that it remains white. Just wanna let you know, that is not how it works. Just like I said earlier, hydrogen peroxide the residual of hydrogen peroxide up in the hair, which we have to have to oxidize our ammonia or aniline derivative, 
within the hair for permanent hair color and bleaching services. If you add bleach to gray white hair, your results are going to be yellow because there is always residual yellow even in bleach on white hair. So a lot of you are sitting there thinking, oh no, what am I going to do? She came in with like all of her ends are like a level five neutral and her roots are like 100% level five gray. There are levels to gray too. We'll go into that in a different class because I don't want to get sidetracked, but I happen to do that. Um, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, I got these gray roots and the rest of her hair is like a level five. Like, I get it. I've been there. Don't stress though, because what's going to happen is you, as long as you leave, um, not so much with gray roots, I take that back. You could go in and you could foil in the colors that you need, uh, or the bleach that you need in the areas that you need it. And the gray hair will then turn yellow. And then the rest of the hair that is a level five neutral is going to evaporate or dissipate or pull out that color, disperse that color out using the bleach and the hydrogen peroxide resulting in this right here. So now you have a palette starting from root to ends that is this color. Now what you do is you color this to the color that you want, whether that be uh, blonde or blonde, um, a lighter blonde, you would add purple. If it's you want to go platinum, here's the catch. If you want to go platinum, do y'all know how to get to platinum hair? The secret of the toning ingredient? Well, we know that purple takes out yellow, right? But to get platinum, you got to have more blue. So rather than using a toner that is purple, you would actually use a blue violet and maybe even add in a little extra blue. And what will that do? That will take platinum hair to the beautiful silver gray hair that we also madly want. So understand, people who can get, hairstylists who can get hair to natural looking gray are awesome. You know why they're awesome? Because they understand toning and bleaching. And they understand that bleaching will only go to this. That's all you can do. You can't go any wider. So if you want it wider, you must continue to add blue and purple. I'm going to give this one more shot and we're going to call it a day. So as I'm going to stir this up, remember this is our oxidizer and our bleach. Stirring and stirring and stirring. Let's see how long it takes that blue to do its job. Ooh, look at it. You guys can see it just going away, going away, going away. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Let's just keep letting it be. Let's let that bleach and developer do its job. Look at there, y'all. Kind of going down to green. Oh. Let's see where this takes us. Oh, wait. Is it going to pull out the yellow? Or is it starting to turn kind of a gray green? I'm just curious to know what it's going to do. And well, look at that. It's eventually turning back to yellow, y'all. And it's kind of hard to tell. I don't want to spill this all over my room. I'm loving this, guys. This is so fun. And the longer we sit here, the more yellow we'll have. Or better yet, maybe it'll be a yellow with a blue-violet causing it to look kind of like a gray-green. Pretty cool, huh? Now again, because this is water 
and it's baking soda and bleach, it's not going to be as proportioned properly as it would in the real scenario. So with that being said, we have to keep in mind that because of that, and I'm not using specific measurements, I'm just kind of doing a quick example for y'all. Put this up against a wall. I don't know if you can see it, but you see how it's all turning back to yellow? And I think if we sat here long enough and continue to add purple, or even if I had some straight purple food coloring, we might be able to get this back to clear. But for hair, it's not the scenario, but this gives you a really, really good example of how hair color works and how toning works. So with that being said, I'm gonna wrap this up, clean up my mess. Sorry, and I'm gonna call it a day. I hope you guys had a great time with me. Thank you for allowing me about a half hour of your time. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope this helps. And always remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And again, like I always say, remember to pray before you slay and use lots of hairspray. Oh yeah, sorry about the frizzy hair. I just wanted to show you guys this cool trick. Oh, and just one more look. Check it out, y'all. It's back to yellow. Anyway, y'all have a great time. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.